tonight the alleged plot to kidnap and kill Holly Willoughby. The presenter was given police protection and taken off air. A man from Harlow has been charged after claims he tried to hire a hitman in America. Concern today from colleagues and the Prime Minister. I was so sorry to hear about everything going on with Holly. So I just wanted to send my yeah. best to her and her family Thank and to you. all of you. Thank you. appreciate that. Also ahead, shot dead on the streets of Battersea. A murder investigation is launched after the death of a 22-year-old. Feeling targeted, the Muslim community group picking up the pieces after their centre was ransacked and torched. Plus... Good evening. A man has been charged with soliciting to commit murder over an alleged plot to kidnap ITV presenter Holly Willoughby. Essex Police say it has been an extremely fast-paced investigation, but we know on Wednesday officers arrested a 36-year-old man called Gavin Plum from Harlow as part of that operation. Holly Willoughby was taken off air for her own safety yesterday and given police protection at her home. With the latest, here's Helen Keenan. Now, you may have seen this. Our Holly is on the Sun front page this morning. Away from our TV screens, but on our front pages. Holly Willoughby has become a subject on her own show. And her daytime TV colleagues rocked by revelations of a murder and kidnap plot against the presenter. Very, very upsetting. And of course, we're sending Holly all of our love and best wishes. That's a terrible thing to be having to go through for her and her family. We're obviously all shocked to hear the news yeah. and we want to send our love and biggest hugs to Holly and her family. Absolutely. And reaction this morning from their guest on the sofa, the Prime Minister. Before we get going, I was going to say, I just, I was so sorry to hear about everything going on with Holly. So oh, I just wanted to send my you. best to her and her family thank and to you. all of appreciate you. appreciate that. All airing while Holly is under police protection at home with her family. And while the suspect at the centre of the allegations, 36-year-old Gavin Plum, in custody at Chelmsford Magistrates Court, where he appeared charged with offences including soliciting to commit murder and incitement to commit kidnap. The court heard claims how he had approached a hitman in the US who was planning to fly to the UK next week, and they had formed a detailed plan. Essex police say this was an extremely fast-paced investigation with many of our officers and national partners working overnight to secure these charges. The safeguarding of any victim is paramount and we will continue to prioritise this and work with the Metropolitan Police Service as the investigation proceeds. Holly Willoughby was last at the studios here in White City to present this morning on Wednesday. Today, an ITV spokesperson has released a statement saying this news has come as a huge shock to everyone at this morning at ITV. We are providing all of the support we can to Holly and her family at this incredibly distressing time. To come. Come. <laughs> Who's going to do it? It's got my name on it. Read it? Read it the traumatic threat to her life has come on what's already been a challenging year for the presenter, following the exit of her co-host Philip Schofield, who she'd been partnered with for 13 years. Fans have just swarmed her with, you know, positive messages, wishing her well, hoping that she's safe. And obviously they're all dying to see her back on screen as well because she is that familiar face that everyone wants to see every day. Um, unexpectedly wasn't there on, on the show on Thursday and they're hoping that she'll be back as soon as possible. But but more importantly, that she's, that she's safe and that she feels safe. And I think that's the main thing because at the moment there's a lot of messaging in the world about violence against women. The star has been flooded with support on social media from fans who are already feeling her absence from the sofa. Helen Keenan, ITV News. Next tonight, a murder investigation has been started in Battersea after a 22-year-old man was killed in a shooting. Emergency services were called to Shuttleworth Road last night, but despite their efforts to save the victim, he died at the scene. Antoine Allen sent us this update. Yes, this is another fatal shooting in the capital. Now, last night the police were called here to Shuttleworth Road. They went into Gateskell Court where they found a man who'd suffered gunshot wounds. Now, people in the area told me they were surprised and shocked to hear what happened. Now, currently the man has not been named. We believe he is in his 20s. Now, we've been here throughout the day and a number of people have turned up to show their respects. We've seen family members and friends lay 
flowers, but the police investigation is ongoing. Forensic officers have been combing the area and the police have been making their inquiries. Now, the MP for Battersea, Marsha de Cordova, issued this statement. I'm deeply saddened to hear of the fatal shooting of a young man yesterday evening in Battersea. My thoughts and prayers are with his family at this difficult time. This is another attack that will shock our community. Two fatal killings in Battersea in less than eight weeks shows the urgent need to take action to combat serious violence. I'm in contact with the police and the inquiries are ongoing. Now, the police have asked anybody who has any information to contact them. For those that want to know, this is the eighth fatal shooting in the capital. Anton Allen reporting there from Battersea. Now, the police inspectorate has said failures by the Metropolitan Police in their approach to child protection are putting vulnerable children at risk. According to a review commissioned by the mayor, the force is failing to properly respond when children are reported missing or when they are at risk of exploitation. A Met spokesperson said he was deeply concerned but said it has a strategy to support officers. However, the report author said this. Our last inspection in 2016 and our subsequent reviews over the last few years have shown that the force have been slow to improve in terms of our previous recommendations. Crumbling concrete, known as rack, has been found in the heart of Westminster. A review identified 18 areas where rack could be present, with further investigations planned to determine the extent. And a woman who was seriously injured in a road collision has called for the introduction of a new victims commissioner. Sarah Hope was left with severe leg injuries after being hit by a bus in 2007. She now says victims and their families need more support. A Muslim women's education centre in Hayes has been ransacked and set on fire hours later in what they say may have been a hate crime. The Al Fala Institute is appealing for help from the community to replace burnt and stolen items as the police try to establish the motive for the attack. From there, Carolyn Sim has more. Where prayers were once held lie the burnt remains of precious books, among them over a hundred Qurans. What was on these shelves? In the room where they'd been stored, some looked like blocks of charcoal. None can be saved. I haven't got the word to explain you how much we all hurt. What they get from there, there is no cash, nothing is here. Just a, they broke the donation box. How much money there? The £50 a week? Nothing. In another room, they cleaned the smoke-damaged books they can reuse. More than 50, mostly Muslim women, visit this centre every day to learn. They now fear this attack was motivated by hate. It makes us feel isolated. It makes us feel targeted. And what do you think needs to happen? Um, I think there needs to be an understanding that we're humans and there's really no need for it. If we are not safe here, how can we save in our houses? It's really painful. Our heart is broken. It was last week that thieves broke into the institute and ransacked the office. Police were called but said they couldn't attend until the next day. That night, the vandals returned, broke in again and started the fire. The Met didn't comment about their response but said the motive of the attack remains unclear and police are maintaining an open mind as the investigation progresses. Officers have been in regular contact with the venue to listen to their concerns and offer security advice. What are you going to do now? We will rebuild this. We are not stopping. We managed to get for three days one, one, some one sitting room and we've done our classes since then on the Monday. We sit in the garden and we continue and carry on our classes. We are not going to stop. Replacing what's been lost here will be costly. A fund has been set up to help. The damage will be repaired. But these women are anxious. The place they call their second home has been so cruelly targeted. Carolyn Sim, ITV News, Hayes. Still to come on the programme. We will have uh, the football fan who's putting a poster back up in his club because of this sitcom. 
and it looks like we're going to see things getting even warmer as we work our way through this weekend. Temperatures in the mid 20s. I'll tell you all about it at the end of the programme. But first, he wasn't aware men could even get the disease. But in 2012, Doug Harper's life changed dramatically with a breast cancer diagnosis. After finally getting the all clear, the father of five from Plumstead has been using his experience to warn other men about the illness. Max Martel went to meet him. So you have been completely in remission now? Yeah. Doug Harper got breast cancer, something he never knew was even a risk. Around about the summer of 2011, I had what I thought was a cyst on my left nipple. It was getting worse and worse. And in the end, I thought, I'd just, I'd better go to the doctor, just as, you know, I didn't think, I didn't even know men could get breast cancer. And when he said it was cancer, I didn't hear anything else. I just, I just had the word cancer going around my head. This was back in 2012. A mastectomy and chemo followed, but eventually Doug got the all clear. I still have a mammogram every two, which is tricky for men, but I still have a mammogram every two years. And yeah, so, so far that's all been, it's all been clear. Why is it tricky for men? Because you have to, they put this, put you in a clamp. Okay. <laughs> My name's Doug Harper, I'm 61. As part of Breast Cancer Awareness Month, the father of five is fronting a campaign to spread the word that it affects everyone. I went to the pharmacy, as soon as I was diagnosed, I get tamoxifen, and the man at the pharmacy said, this isn't for you, it's for, it's for women, it's for breast cancer. So I said to him, men can get breast cancer too. So it's been like a bit of a mantra for me. Obviously, when you think about breast cancer, you always think of women. Yeah. What's your message to the men out there? If you get a lump, not just on your net, nipple, anywhere, anywhere in your body, anything abnormal, any anomaly is just get it checked. Hello, Breast Cancer Now helpline. Breast Cancer Now is the charity working with Doug on the awareness campaign. About 400 men in the UK are diagnosed every year with breast cancer, as opposed to women, where the numbers are around 55,000. Men particularly, they, they might not think that they're at risk of getting breast cancer. So yes, there is a, a danger, I suppose, that they might miss something. So it's, uh, it's really important to spread the uh, message of breast awareness. So go on, show me, how do, how do you check? Here, on the nipple, just like pinch it a bit. And under your arm, same thing. And any lump there? Any lump there, any anomaly. Get it checked out. Yeah, get it checked out straight away. And the thing is, if you get it checked out straight away, you'll be like me, 12 years later, still here, banging on the back. <laughs> it was about as well breast cancer awareness in men. Smiling in the sun. <laughs> Doug's message is simple, men get breast cancer too, and check yourself. Rags Martel, ITV News, Plumstead. OK, the ITV News continues at 6.30. Here's a look ahead now with Lucrezia. A man is charged over an alleged plot to kidnap Holly Willoughby. It's after the This Morning presenter was taken off the show yesterday for her own protection. We'll have the latest. Plus, celebrations for Labour in Scotland. They win big in the Rutherglen by-election, piling pressure on the SNP and... A warning to visiting rugby fans as the bed bugs continue to bite in Paris. Join me for those stories and more at 6.30. But first, the rapper Shocker is encouraging black men to be more open with their vulnerability. The Tottenham-born musician, whose real name is Kenneth Erahon, appears in a new ITV documentary, Black Boys Can Cry, as part of Black History Month. He's been speaking to Cafo Pata about the need to change perceptions. We need to make speaking up cool so the younger generation don't fool. Fighting the stigma of mental illness amongst black men. Dresses and you can't share your thoughts. <laughs> Having been diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia, depression and sectioned four times, the rapper Shocker knows all too well the trials, the tribulations of mental health. It's why he's now urging more men of his colour to seek help if they're struggling. Nah, get it off your chest. That's what I'm saying, but that's, that's what's the danger of mental health. Is, it's not what you look like, do you know what I mean? It's what you're going through mentally. We meet near his home on Broadwater Farm Estate, a place known for the infamous 1985 riots, criminal gangs, a place where acting tough, even when you're feeling down, used to be the norm. Growing up, 
and live in a place like this. I mean, I'm from Tottenham, you're from Farm, yeah. both really rough areas. Yeah. And you have to be a bit tough. Yes. But you don't need to keep that toughness, that's yes. what you're saying. Yes. Steam, there's weakness, do you know what I mean? But in the world, outside of these environments, it's deemed as a strength. And I never knew that. I spent like, that's why I'm like trying to um, change the perception around vulnerability with men. If you've ever been sexual, man, don't ever feel ashamed. He'll be changing those perceptions in the upcoming ITV Someone documentary, like Black Boys Can Cry, during which he opens up about his own battles with grief. And this documentary is called Black Boys Can Cry. I have yeah. to ask. When was the last time you cried? Ooh. Are you crying right now? Is that nah. why the <laughs> <laughs> Nah, the last time I cried was uh, when my mum passed. My mum passed away last year. She had cancer. She fought with cancer I'm for like two, for three years. Yeah. yeah, I cried. I cried that whole process. Still cry to this day. While speaking about his mother, he makes a plea to other Afro-Caribbean parents, asking them to be more understanding of the mental struggles of their black children. In, in, in the African, what country are you from? Ghana. Ghana, I'm Nigerian. In the African community, depression is not a thing. And I can understand why, because they grew up in a time where it was much harder, much harsher. Yeah, yeah. So to them... Chop life. Chop life. So to them, like, this should be heaven for us. But what people fail to understand is that um, everyone's life is tailor-made to them. Recent government statistics show that black men are more likely to be diagnosed with serious mental illnesses. It's shocker's hope that by speaking out, the stigma surrounding black mental health can be broken. Nah, get it off your chest. Cafe Pato, ITV News. Let's have a look at the weekend sport now with plenty of action on the pitch. Zero Accounting Software. Sponsors ITV Regional Sports Report. Chelsea manager Emma Hayes has said it is time to grow for the Women's Super League, calling for it to be expanded from 12 teams to 18. Speaking earlier, she said more teams and therefore more games would boost the drama of the league. When are we going to make our league a bit bigger? Because, you know, losing a league or you know, you're out of a league contender position if you lose two games very early on. I think our league, our league should, it's time to grow. West Ham have continued their successful start in the Europa League with a record-breaking victory at Freiburg. They won 2-1 last night, becoming the first English side to go unbeaten for 17 consecutive games in Europe. And remember when this 70s sitcom became the hot topic at Tottenham Hotspur? Sunday, Monday, happy days. Tuesday, Wednesday, happy days. It was last week that Spurs manager Ange Postacoglu revealed he was a fan of the show. Liverpool was, was my team, and, uh, but, you know, you, you grow up and things change. Uh, you know, I used to love happy days back there too, but, you know, <laughs> I don't have places of Fonzie on my wall either. That sparked an unlikely bromance with the Fonz, actor Henry Winkler promising Postagoglu a signed poster on the condition it returned to his bedroom wall. Well, today the Spurs boss gave his much-anticipated response. Firstly, can I say what a gentleman uh, Henry Winkler is. Uh, he, he sent me a message and that's uh, truly chuffed by that because... Um, you know, I think I said during the week, sometimes you get disappointed uh, when you mention your heroes. But, uh, yeah, what a, what a great gentleman. And uh, if he does send me a post to sign, I will definitely put it on uh, on my wall, um, despite the protestations of my wife. Now, if you're a fan of the streets, you won't want to miss our guest tonight. Welcome to you, Mike. So this is a film that you came up with the idea for, wrote, yeah. directed, yeah. starring in, and have done the soundtrack for. Yes. That's incredible. Yeah. Well, I mean, um, yeah, it's really just an extension of what I was doing before anyway, um, but it's just taken much longer than I expected it to take. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's finally finished. Um, but it's, it's a musical, um, but where the songs are the voiceover, my songs, and uh, it's just a very simple story about a DJ played by me. An intriguing concept. Shall we have a look? 
Yes. Here we go. Yeah, yeah. Hey, hey. Like a little theatre show that we used to make as kids of cardboard when we were home. Looking down from in the gods as people go on below. Trapped inside the nightclub, tiny little minds are alone. Lighting passing overhead, which misses some and then finds them like their prison breaking from Alcatraz in their minds. So what is it you're trying to explore through the film then? Because you often like to look at themes and society in your music, don't you? Yeah, I mean, to be honest, I've always just talked, I've always told stories about the thing that I know about. And when I was younger, what I knew about was, uh, you know, hanging out and, and um, wearing nice jumpers, as I saw on that clip before. But um, I've been DJing uh, since I stopped doing the streets, really. I stopped doing the streets to make a film and then, um, and then really I started doing the streets again to make a film. It's all, it's all circular. just become, yes, everything is circular. Uh, and uh, so it's quite a simple story, but it's an excuse to, to shoehorn in some, um, some thoughts and prayers. Yeah. You got in some good London locations during filming, didn't you? Yeah, I mean, to be honest, I got in loads of the, the, the geography of the film makes zero sense. Uh, we shot some bits in Manchester, some bits in Birmingham, and some bits in London. So um, it's uh, a fictional story, um, but it's but it kind of um, everything is what it says it is. I shot it all at real events, and all the people pretty much in the film are kind of what they say they are, apart from the uh, leading lady Bella May, who who plays uh, my um, my counterpart. Okay. I love you're not giving too much away. It sounds intriguing. It is called The Darker the Shadow, The Brighter the Light. And well you, are doing, you are doing Q&As at every man uh, screenings uh, in London, which yes. is fantastic. Mike, yeah. thank you so much. Thanks for having for me. Us. Just before we go, a recap of our top story tonight. A man has been charged over an alleged plot to kidnap ITV presenter Holly Willoughby. Gavin Plum from Harlow has been charged with several offences, including soliciting to commit murder and incitement to commit kidnap. There was concern today from her colleagues and also from the Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak, when he appeared on the programme this morning. On to the weather now, and we are in for a balmy October weekend. Charlie Powell has the forecast. Whatever the weather, it always feels like home. Valent Heat Pumps and Boilers sponsor ITV London Weekend Weather. Hello. As we head into the weekend, we're going to see a continuation of the pretty dry, pretty fine, pretty sunny weather we've seen today, except that it will get even warmer, if you can believe it. felt perfectly warm to me outside today, but we've got high pressure in charge still. And in that position, the wind's going clockwise around that area of high pressure. It just drags up that little bit more heat across most of southern Britain as we head through the course of this weekend. And by Sunday, we could be looking at the mid-20s quite easily. Then as for the rest of this evening and tonight, it's pretty dry out there, some clear skies. There might, though, be a little bit of cloud around the sort of early hours, bringing just the occasional spot of very light rain. But that's about as exciting as it gets through tonight. Mild as well, lows of 12 or 13 degrees by the time we get through to tomorrow morning. And a good deal of bright and fine weather from the word go on Saturday. It's going to be a real sunny day, maybe a little bit of cloud down towards the south of the city early on. But a good deal of fine weather and, yes, those temperatures even higher than today. 23 degrees in Heathrow. For example, one or two spots might just make it up to 24. So that's a good sort of five, six, seven degrees above where it should be for the time of year. And it stays that way as we head through the weekend. Sunday, again, a good deal of fine weather with that high pressure in charge. Lots of nice sunshine. Temperatures peaking probably 25, maybe even 26 at a push, which should be the first time since around 2018 we've seen temperatures of that order. And the weather stays pretty dry right the way through into next week. High pressure slowly starts to pull away but temperatures only very gradually working their way down. They're still going to be well above average, but it may be later on Wednesday that we start to tap into something perhaps a little less settled and eventually something a bit cooler. Valent Heat Pumps and Boilers sponsor ITV London Weekend Weather. Well, enjoy the heat. That is it from us. The ITV Evening News is next with Lucrezia, but for now, from all of us on the London team, have a lovely weekend. Bye-bye.